Hey guys, my name is Todd Best, and I'm an applications engineer here at Cypress Semiconductor, and I work on PSOC. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own very simple traffic light controller using UDBs in PSOC 5. I have here a PSOC 5 LP FreeSOC 2 board provided by SparkFun, and I also have a traffic light controller shield board that we'll be using to demonstrate the traffic light controller working. In this video, I'm actually going to be taking elements from other videos that I've created. So I created a video on how to create a simple down counter and also how to create a simple state machine. So I'm going to be using the things that we created in those videos to create this simple traffic light controller. So let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to do is create our own custom component in a library. In the other videos that I mentioned, I show you how to create your own library. So I'm just going to use the library that I used in those videos and I'm going to add to it. So I'm going to right click on the project and I'm going to add a component item. And I'm going to add a UDB document, and I'm going to call this simple TL for traffic light control. And I'm going to make sure that I choose the PSOC 5 LP device, and I'm going to create new. So this is going to create my UDB document. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add some more pages so that we can put more stuff in our design. So if I right click and I say add UDB page, it adds a new page. We can also rename them so that we know what they're doing. So I'm going to rename this first one counter. And I'm going to rename this second one state machine. Now, since I've created this in the same library that I created those other components, I can actually go to those components and I can copy and paste them onto this one. So I'm going to go to the simple counter we created and I'm going to copy and paste the data path design. So if I go to simple counter, and click on the data path and I can copy it and I can come to my simple traffic light controller and I can paste it in. And then I can also go to my state machine and I can select all of this and I can copy it and then I can go back to the traffic light controller and paste it into the state machine page. So in the state machine we had an input which changed when the lights changed between red and green and yellow. In this design, I actually want that to be done with a timer. So I'm going to use that timer that I pasted in. And if you remember, it has a terminal count or zero output. So I'm going to delete change on the transitions. And I'm actually going to set it to zero, or the label zero, that is. So I'm going to do that on all my transitions. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my simple counter and I want to set the initial value of D0 to 10. You'll see why I'm doing this in a second. The last thing that we need to do is we need to define our outputs. This is the same as when we created the simple state machine. So I'm going to define a red light, a green light, and a yellow light. And if we go back to our state machine, you'll see that I have different outputs defined for each state. So I'm going to set those outputs to the different lights. So I want my red light to be controlled by red out, my green light to be controlled by green out, and then obviously the yellow light to be controlled by yellow out. So the last thing we need to do is generate our symbol. So I'm going to right click in the white space and say generate symbol. And now we have the symbol for a simple traffic light controller. I'm going to save it. All right, so we've just created our component, and so now we need to use it in a design. Now, this design is very similar to the design that we created for the state machine, so I'm actually going to go open that PSOC Creator project again, and I'm going to replace the state machine component with this new simple traffic light controller component. Now, an important thing to note here is if you already had that project open in PSOC Creator, you have to close it and then reopen it in order for the new component to show up. So I already have it up here, so I'm just going to open it. I'm going to go to the schematic. And I'm going to, if you notice in the default tab, the state machine, or simple traffic light controller component is there. I'm going to drag it on. I'm going to connect the clock up. Now you may be wondering what happened to the other component. Well, I had already deleted everything and saved it when I closed the project, so that's why the other things aren't there. So if you start from the simple state machine component schematic, you need to delete that component and delete the input and the debouncer and make your schematic look just like this. So I'm going to save this. 
I'm also going to go to the design wide resources just to make sure my pins are configured correctly. So my green LED is on P24, red on P26, yellow on P25. We're good to go. So let's program this guy up and see what happens. Now you may remember that I said that I wanted to change D0 to a value of 10 instead of 3. The reason I did that is because I have a 10 hertz clock on my schematic and so I want the LEDs to change once a second. So a 10 hertz clock divided by a count of 10 would be one second. So after this project is programmed, you should see the LEDs on the board change colors once every second. So as you can see, the lights are changing. Green, yellow, red. Green, yellow, red. But the transition time between each change is identical. So at a typical American stoplight, it's green for a long time, yellow for a very short time, and then red for a longer time. So we need to find a way to change the transition times here from just being one second to having some variability. So let's go back to our project. So if we go back to the library and we look at the state machine, you'll notice that we always change states when the zero output is high. And if we go back to the counter, we remember that that happens every one second. So we need to add another time base. So to do that, I'm going to choose a count seven component and I'm going to drag it on. The count seven component is a simple seven bit down counter. For this component, I'm going to set its initial value or its period to 10. And I want to name the output something that I can remember. So I'm going to call it one second TC. So every one second, this terminal count output should go high. Now you remember that we did the same thing over here, but now I actually want to use this guy to do some different timing. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to reset the value of D0 to 3. And I'll explain why I'm doing that in a second. And I want to actually go change this name to 3 second TC. I'm going to say OK and then this is some garbage that we got in here, but we're not going to worry about that. OK, so now what I want to do is every one second I need to change the instruction and also every three seconds I need to do that. So I'm going to add the one second TC here and I'm also going to add the three second TC here. And then let me explain this momentarily. So here's what I'm trying to do is I have a one second timer running in this count seven and then I want to use that to create a three second timer out of the data path. So if you remember I set the value to three Actually, if you're smart, you may have caught my error. That should be a four second timer because it counts three, two, one, zero. So I'm going to create my four second timer in here. So what I need to do is every time this one second timer expires, I want to decrement my count. So I need to move my instructions around a little bit. So that means when instruction address bit one is one, then I'm going to decrement my count. So that would be right here. So I'm going to set this, this up the same as I had it before. I'm just going to call this decrement count. I'm going to do the same exact thing as I had in the other one and I'm going to subtract one from A0 and I want to write that value back into A0. And then the other thing that I want to do is whenever this guy has expired, so whenever the three second terminal count is high, I want to reload the value. I'm going to come in here and I want to say A0 equals D0. And I'm going to say reload counter. And then these first two, which we had originally populated, I'm just going to actually delete these. I don't want them to be doing anything. They're just a no op. Do the same thing over here. Okay, so I just did a lot of steps. Let me back up and explain them a little better. So I have this counter running right here. And every one second, he's going to trigger a terminal count. And when that happens, it's going to cause this guy to decrement his counter. Now his count value is set to three. So after he counts down to zero, then he's going to reload it back. So I have one value that goes off every one second. And then I have another value that goes off every four seconds. So let's see if we can use that in our state machine. So I'm going to go to my state machine. And then I want to say the red to green transition, I want to happen on the one second TC. Oops. 
and then the green to yellow I want to happen on the three second. So this will give it a little longer period. And this one I'm also going to do on the one second. All right, so I'm going to save this. Let's just make sure we got our names correct. One second, TC, OK. OK, so we go back to our schematic. And we don't need to make any changes, because all the changes propagated from the library. The only difference is, is that we need to start that count7 component that we created in the library. So in order to do that, I need to go to main, and I need to call start for that component. So the start function is going to have the name of the component, which is simple underscore tl underscore control underscore 1. I know I made it a long name. But if I go to main, I'm going to copy that in. And then I also need to know the name of my count7. So if we go back to our library, you'll see that the count7 is called count7 underscore 1. So we need to go back to the project, and we need to say count7 underscore 1 underscore start. And that will start the counter. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to program it. And after this is programmed, you should see that the red light is on for a little bit of time, the green light is on for longer, and then the yellow light is very short. So as you can see, I have a very long green light to let the cars go through, yellow light's very short, and then a little bit longer of a red light. So now I've just created a very simple one direction traffic light controller. This might be useful if you're in a small town and you only have one intersection, and it only has one road. <laughs> But we're actually going to make this work in a real world situation. So I'm going to have all four traffic lights controlled in the next video. So stay tuned for that.